So if you were with us for other two videos, you noticed that there were um, a couple of things that were going on with the, with the whole process um, when it comes down to what kind of settings we needed to have for Windows 10. So if you click on the little home tile and you click on setting, um, one of the things you first thing to do to go for um, is go ahead and hit on privacy. So let apps use mine. And this is just the general one. So uh, I'm one of those people. I don't like advertising. Turn off smart screens. Send Microsoft information. No, 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 no. So I just turned all the privacy things off because I don't want them to deal with it. I don't want them to know my location. I don't want them to know about my location. So any apps they can use my location. Once you turn it off, you're good to go. Um, camera, do you want it to have access? No. And that turns off all the things that would ask for your camera. Um, so that's okay, you know, um, messaging, things like that, that makes sense for the camera. A microphone, let apps use my microphone. Is there a reason for this? There is for the microphone. If you're going to be using Cortana, the assistant, then you definitely want to have the microphone on, but there's a lot of other things that are going along here too. Speech inking and typing, getting to know me. I don't want to set that up. Account info, let apps access my name, picture, no. <laughs> <laughs> contacts uh, no uh, don't want because again this is just a stock install um, calendar let apps access my calendar no any kind of call history no um, email let apps ac access and send email for you um, you know that's kind of the thing if you're going to use this for mail and calendar I'd leave that on but because again this is stock install I'm just going to turn everything off because I'm going to be really curious as to see what happens, no radios, no other devices, um, anything else that wants to do things along the way, um, no beacons, so we don't want to sync with any devices. Now this is the one that gets everybody interested, the feedback and diagnostic stuff that gets actually sent off to Microsoft. A lot of people recommend that you set that to basic and never. Um, and again, it's just kind of one of those things, diagnostic reports, they give you the privacy status and they give you all the rest of it. You're still going to send stuff, even if you um, send even if you send it to basic you can't turn this off um, at least not that I know of and then any kind of background apps um, that you want to have um, going on you know it's kind of you know I don't want to get off as you know groove music maps edge you know all the things that you may want to turn off uh, and you have to go through and you have to turn them all off individually you can't there's no big blanket turn off kind of thing so we have basically turned off everything that was privacy related and then if we go back to settings um, we can actually go back through any kind of personalization easy access accounts um, system you know so any kind of notifications and actions show me tips on windows do i care no 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 hide notifications off and again the idea is i really want to turn as much stuff off as humanly possible because i'm curious about what we're going to see when we bring up the next wireshark packet transfer um, lots of um, apps that came with candy crush i have no idea why they gave you candy crush not a one oh and you can't right click on it either that's a bad thing multitasking uh not too worried about that tablet mode off wait what was that hide icon apps note power and sleep storage i've got plenty of you can tell this is a virtual box offline maps no maps delete all maps default settings about windows 10 and again this is an unregistered version so we're okay all right, so we turned off everything. We turned off everything. Did we turn off everything? I also wanted to turn off that data usage. Wow, right, I've only used this thing for like uh, two minutes. I've already shoved a quarter of a gig down the pipe. That is like crazy, crazy amounts of data. Man, uh, no, no. <laughs> Turning off VPN, I don't have dial up, ethernet, ethernet connected. Um, I do want to change some of my adapter options, mostly because remember we were seeing um, IPv6 on this, and I don't really use IPv6, so I do want to turn off IPv6 as a driver. I don't need that. Link layer topology, yeah, I need that. LLP, yeah, I need four, yeah, I need that. So okay, so I don't really need all that. So close. So that takes care of that. And then no proxy. Uh, no, there's no proxy. There's no manual proxy setup or anything else. So now we've got that. Let's see what Wireshark does for me. All right, so I have turned literally everything off that I can. And uh, we got our modules loaded up. It's going to start checking and seeing that. 
Let's see, we got, all right, so there's my ICMP version six. Shouldn't be seeing that because I just turned off ICMP version six. There's my ARP. I would want ARP. Uh, 10 0 is, and has a physical address. So we got a physical address. Wow, that just shut off a whole bunch of stuff. Camdis. I have no idea what Camdis hardware is. Real tech, I know what that is. That's expected. Tell 10 2. Oh, wow, there's something weird. I have to check my network now. All right, so that significantly shut down the amount of traffic, but not all of it. Um, I've still got stuff going on out the door on. So 64, 454, 254, we'll have to check that one out. Someone go check that out and put it in the notes. 64, 454, 254. You can see this thing really slowed down. Once you turned off all that background garbage, wow, this thing really did slow down. Once we turned off everything. So that's a good sign. That's a good sign that if you turn everything off, if you do the, the way they tell you to... Uh, to do their things, that's something that you may want to actually take a look at when you're setting up your Windows 10 to try to get it to chill out and not use 258 megs of data in five, 10 minutes. That's crazy amounts of data going back and forth. Man, that's, uh, I, this is a stock install. I haven't done anything to this box yet. Um, it did try to load an update, so that will explain some of it. But what's interesting is that we're getting some, some wow, some time to leave exceeded. Uh, we get some router solicitation. That's fine. I expect that. And be query. Um, and why are they trying to go to 10 to 215? I wonder if that's even a valid IP address. So let me see if I can bring up a command, command line on this thing. All apps. CMD command. Uh, they take out my command line. All right, I'll have to try to find a command line on this one. I haven't used Windows 10 yet, so this is more of a lark for me. Uh, we'll have to figure that one out. All right, but oh, hey, turn that on. Went and did something. That got me right back into uh, getting data moving. Interesting. Yeah, no, so this is kind of cool. If you turn it, turn everything off, it does slow down. If you leave it, if you leave all the settings as they are stock fresh out of the box, uh, you are going to pump a lot of data back to Microsoft, and we don't know what it is. <laughs> we have absolutely no idea what it is, and that alone is interesting. So this is just fresh. I haven't done anything. You're seeing me uh, install. You're seeing me just run through it, and then you're seeing me just kind of take it after I've done all the recommended security settings that most people will tell you to do. And it does slow it down, but you are still going to be uh, pumping data. You are still doing things that go back to Microsoft. And we have no idea what they are, but hey, at least it's encrypted. That's a good sign. At least it's HTTPS. So that means that there's still stuff running, just definitely not as heavy as, <laughs> as it was when you just take that flat off the ISO image and go with it on, an, on, an, uh, on this thing. So I would really recommend then if you're going to, if you're interested in doing anything like this, we do, this box does talk to Microsoft. It says stuff to Microsoft, it finishes, so it did Finax. Uh, it finishes whatever it's gonna do, it does kind of do its own thing, but wow, this is pretty crazy amounts of traffic. Um, on the previous one where it was just flat out of the box, no worries, um, after installing Wireshark. <laughs> So again, just kind of interesting that we can slow it down at least. Um, now, as for digging deeper into this, um, it does phone back to the mothership for whatever reason. Uh, we have no idea what's in that right now because I can't really bust out what's inside these encrypted packets, um, unfortunately. I don't have that technology on this box. But it is just kind of interesting that we are seeing you know, other devices on the network, other things that are doing their own kind of process. Um, it is just definitely trying to find somebody, and I think it's trying to do whatever it was going to do. It was able to finally talk to you 10 0 um, and that may be this box. No, it shouldn't be this box. This box shouldn't have that IP address. That's not a standard. Uh... Eh, could be. I don't know. Interesting, though. Go ahead. Take a look at it. Do the recommended security settings. So you at least turn all this stuff off and then kind of go for it. I want to thank you all for watching, but hey, just remember, uh, Windows 10 does phone back to the mothership. You saw it in the previous video. Um, I'm going to string all these videos together so you can kind of see how all this stuff works. But there it is. Interesting stuff. Really, really, truly interesting on what Windows will do.